Okay, hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and um, I hope we're live on Facebook Live. I may have been 30 seconds late because uh, Hopkins, the um, Facebook Live changed something, which required me to answer a bunch of questions before we started. So, um, welcome everybody. I'm, I'm sure I'm great that you're here. Um, the um, um, it, it's interesting, I'm, and I'm hoping that um, they have these new settings on Facebook Live about uh, comments. Um, well, let's see. Uh, we're just going to assume that uh, if someone puts a comment there, hopefully we'll see it. Uh, I'm not sure what all, all these things are. But anyway, this week, um, um, w the title we, we picked for this discussion is something called... Um, our speaker series. Hey, John. So John Biacchino logged in, so that means I know we could, we, we're working. Okay. So um, we've had a speaker series at Hopkins now for the past six years. And I saw the speaker series. What it was meant to do was try to improve the patient experience. And by that, what we tried to do was um, try to have people who were not in medicine talk about what they do and how they do it and the goal would be for us to learn how to do things better in medicine you know because if if i were at hopkins let's say or you're at your hospital and you get some outside experts to come in they're always experts they know how to do everything better they not at their place everything works perfectly you know all the usual things none of which is true if you went to their hospital the thing would be twice as bad as your hospital okay so we'll we'll, we'll agree with that what we wanted to do is look at successful people, what they did in their own business, even though it has nothing to do with medicine, perhaps, but all businesses are in some sense the same. Whatever you do, you want people who do it well, whether it's a restaurant, a car dealer, a hospital, a TV show, a movie theater, a magazine, you name it, everything is the same. You want people to do things really well. And my experience, having known a lot of really, really good people and still know a lot of really, really good people, is there's something special about those people. There's spe something special to this story. It wasn't luck that brought them to where they are today. And it's the success and what they're thinking that really is what I think interests me, interests many of you. So let me just talk about that, and maybe the easiest way, rather than going through generalities, would be to be specific. Now, just to let you know that because I'm always afraid of Zoom and people Zoom bombing, we can't put the, 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 the Zoom link for all of you on CTS Us to go and listen to our talks. We would love to do that. We did that one time, and we were attacked. Now, it was early in COVID era, but we're just afraid of doing it, to be honest with you. So... We don't do it. The good news is that after we have a visitor, we write up what they spoke about and how how we think about the impact on radiology. And it's peer reviewed. We've been very lucky. It's almost every, essentially almost all of our speakers. The article has been accepted in JACR. And it's so it's really good. You can read it. You can look it up. You can look up my name. You can find it. And then all the speakers are the first author. And we just translate it into radiology. So if I looked at this year, and this year is not finished, we have about three or four more incredible speakers, but let me tell you the speakers we've had and what a little bit I've learned from them. We had Linda Carter was our last speaker. Linda Carter, better known as Wonder Woman, was amazing. She spoke a lot about the challenges in her career, the difficulties she had, the challenges she had to overcome to be successful. You know, many of the things relate to the fact she was a woman. And remember, Wonder Woman was 1975, not 2021. A lot of women's issues and a lot of the difficulties related to jobs and harassment, all those things, all the Me Too stuff, wasn't until a couple of years ago, right? But Linda Carter was 40 years earlier, living through a lot of the Me Too stuff. And she spoke about her career, the positive things, the things she's learned, the giving back, whether it's to push people to vote or whether it's for charity, whatever she's done and the importance of balancing family and work, which she's also done extremely well. Before that, we had Keith Grossman. Keith's a good friend of mine. Keith is the editor of Time Magazine. He's re revolutionized that journal. And when he spoke about it, and Keith has spoken with us before, Keith was 
head of uh, Bloomberg Media. So Keith is a he was at head of Wired. Uh, so Keith has been everywhere, done incredible stuff wherever he goes, which is why he keeps moving up the ladder. But he spoke about how, you know, no one expected COVID, right? But that was a black swan. It was an event nobody expected and something you really couldn't plan for. But how do you make do? And he was speaking about how time was able to change how they do things. Although none of them have been back to the office, you know, in roughly a year now, the magazine has increased circulation and things that were part of the magazine, stuff they did for children, stuff they did in financial, a lot of stuff they did is now um, increasing in value and reach because they were able to move things from printed to the web. They were able to repackage things. The educational stuff was distributed. Schools became online because nobody was going to schools. And he spoke about uh, all the things he was able to do and not do with COVID and how you know, this black swan idea about what difficulties, how you make the most out of difficulties. And we had another speaker speaking about the COVID thing, Whitney uh, Zember, Whitney Fishman Zember to be exact, spoke about how scabs versus scars, that how many things that will change because of COVID will go back to the way they were before, but other things will not change. I don't think we're going to not everything is going to be binary, black and white, change, no change. I mean, we do a lot of Zoom conferences. Sometimes it's actually really good that we want to be together. But, you know, things like Facebook Live, I can't be with all of you in a million different countries, but we are together here. So that works out pretty nicely. So there are advantages of some of the new technologies, you know, tele telehealth, telemedicine, which was slowly growing in acceptance went from slowly growing growing to being the only thing that was possible. So that became very, very important. And some things that were coming were in process, became mainstream very, very quickly. Some companies had five years of growth in five months. So that that's another way of thinking about that. We had Bill Brody. Bill used to be the, ch the chair of radiology at Hopkins, the president of the University of Hopkins, and the president of the Salk Institute. He spoke about fundraising. Now, not all of you are raising funds, but talking about how you do it, the challenges, what you're trying to do, and how you just don't ask people, give me this, give me that, how you need to build relationships. And Bill's comments about relationship building are just very strong, uh, regardless of what you do. I think people make the mistake is they, they always think about doing something for someone as you do this for me, I do this for you. And I think um, that that's not the way it works. It's not the way it works. Uh, you need to do things just because you're a nice person, do things. And you never know if you get paid back or not, but you shouldn't be doing things to get paid back. My, my experience has been if you do the right thing, you'll get paid back many times over. It may not take you, you may not be getting it next week. It may take you 30 years, but the point is it will happen, okay? So it will happen. So, um, you know, in the Bible, they talk about giving charity that if you give charity uh, gladly, God always pays you back by a factor of 10. So if you give a thousand, you'll get back 10,000. So that seems to be pretty good math. We also had Patrick Collison. Patrick is one of the leading entrepreneurs in the world, not the country or the state. He's based out of California. He's the CEO and co-founder with his brother of a company called Stripe, which is, which is still pub privately held, but worth over a hundred billion dollars. Stripe is one of the backbones of the internet in all the transactions that are being done. Every one of you on this call has used Stripe many, many times the last year. You don't know you use it because Stripe is in the background just simply making all the processes work. Patrick spoke about the importance of taking risk, the importance of working hard, the importance of thinking outside the box, the importance of learning and listening and writing and be willing to take a challenge and what you believe in. Patrick dropped out of MIT after six months because he had an idea for a company with his brother and then they did the company, they sold it. Then they, formed, then they went back to school. Then they had another great idea. And they, he dropped out of, out of MIT again. His brother dropped out of Harvard and that's how uh, their company is formed. That's where the company started. So you, you can imagine the risk they took. Two boys from Ireland you know, dropping out of two of the most prestigious institutions in the world to chase a dream they had 
that they thought they knew what to do, which they obviously did. We had Sarah Weiskopf. Sarah has been at many of the big uh, Postmates, at uh, I think Twitter, at Google, senior positions in all places. But she had a passion for childcare. She has three kids, and maybe that drove it a little bit. But she wanted to figure out how you could you be able to improve childcare delivery and people being able to f find childcare. So there's a site called Winnie.com. Many of you have probably seen it. It's across the country. You're able to figure out if you're in Baltimore, you type in 21117 and what's the child care is available, whether it's private, whether it's public, whether it's groups, whether it's after school, before school. You can find out everything. There's ratings, there's lots of information. They don't charge you anything. Their business model is they get money from the companies who advertise. But the thing is, it's a real service. And how has she thought about that? the challenges she faced, the fact that she could leave a job that was paying her a lot of money with all the security in the world to get into a new startup that she's a CEO for that could fail. You know, it may be incredibly successful. I think it will be. It's raised $15 million in funding as of a few months ago, but it's high risk. But she had the passion, the will, and I guarantee when, once you know her, um, she's going to indeed make it work. Uh, we've had other people We've had about 60 speakers. We've had everyone from David Izbitsky, who's the main evangelist for Alexa, talking about voice and how we can use voice for controls, be it in hospitals or at home. We had um, Michelle Ballard talk about leadership and how she builds companies. We had Eric Becker, uh, again, these articles, Eric's written three articles with us, how to manage people, how to hire people, how to manage them, how to make certain that you're successful and that people are successful. We had uh, people like John Cameron. He was one of the few physicians, but he's been retired. He, he changed the face of surgery at Hopkins. And we weren't speaking about surgery, but we were speaking about how he did, how he chose people, how he chose residents, how he chose fellows, how he set his plans up to be able to attack a difficult problem, which was pancreatic cancer with Whipple's procedure, how he was able to think and move ahead. Um, you know, it, w it was just breathtaking what he was able to do. And I knew a lot of the story, but still. We had Brian King, Brian's with us twice. Brian was the chief um, officer for uh, Marriott customer service. Now he's the president of Marriott, I think for a for the uh, Central America, for the for Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, as of a few months ago, where Brian was the key for customer service. He spoke about how hotels and hospitals and medical medicine is very similar, that people want the experience. It's not enough to say we do a CT scan, but how do we make people feel when they come there, when they schedule, when they get the reports? How do we treat them at the hospital reception area? How do the technologists do? The CT scan, the reading of the CT, the MR, the ultrasound, they don't see that. They're, they're assuming it's good, but they don't know the difference between Hopkins and uh, yada yada hospital. But we, we think we're better than everybody else. But the point is, the patient doesn't know that. What they know is how we made them feel. And the same thing with hotels. You know, every hotel has a room and there's a, a roof over it. And um, there's, there's fancier hotels, less fancy, depending what you want to spend. But whatever price point you have, people need to be satisfied. If you're picking a high-level Ritz-Carlton, there's a certain level of expectations you have. You have to meet those expectations for people. They'll expect different things if they're staying at a, a lower-level Marriott, right? If they're staying in a residence Marriott, it's not as fancy, but they expect certain amenities. So expectations, and his point was, you need to exceed the expectations of the customer. You can't be that you meet the expectations. Surely it can't be that you fall beneath expectations. You really need to be thinking about what you're doing. Um, we've had a lot of really interesting people. We've had people like um, Jim Travacant, who's big on strategies, was with Harris Corp, Accenture. Um, we had people like Ellie Kaplan, who's running a company in the in neurosciences in California. We had Jensen Wang. One of the greatest articles you ever read, Jensen wrote this article with us uh, five years ago when NVIDIA was doing okay. Now NVIDIA, at that point when he was from NVIDIA, no one knew who the hell NVIDIA was. Now everyone knows NVIDIA. 
and he's been the number one CEO in the world by Fortune Magazine, by Harvard Business Review, you name it. Uh, three of the last four years, or he's finished second uh, a couple times as well. Just amazing. So there's a lot to read about. I wish you could join us, but again, I'm always afraid of you know the difficulties. We have four new speakers that um, Jason Kravitz from Microsoft agreed yesterday. Stu Stuart Eisenstadt, who is one of the leading uh, people in, in law, uh, in the international law over the past 40 or 50 years, has agreed to join us. Uh, so we have really exciting, exciting people coming along. Now let's see, if you have questions, it's a good time to, to ask them. Mark DePaulis, calling from, I guess, New York now. Mark's out of, moved from Massachusetts, New York. He liked our article on YouTube, thank you. And uh, we, um, there's an article that Lily wrote uh, on YouTube uh, and our usages of YouTube and how we're trying to expand our usages. And right after we got that, wrote that article, there's a whole bunch of stuff coming from YouTube now that they want to expand their delivery of information in the healthcare arena. One challenge YouTube has, of course, is that they always, they, there's so much content put up, how do you keep bad content offline? It's really hard, but I think they're gonna push the positive. How do you push good content online? And there was an article in the papers just two days ago about YouTube, um, which is part of Google, of course, wanting to do that. Uh, we have thousands of things on all of our lectures, which is a thousand plus, are on YouTube. All of the individual quiz cases are on YouTube, and anything like Facebook Live also ends up on YouTube as well. Um, we talk about Mark. De Mark DePaulis also mentions customer service uh, and meeting and greeting people. I think customer service is so critical. I think we, uh, it's really hard to really uh, uh, meet, but it's really exceeding customer expectations that's the key um, I think if you don't meet the expectations you're in trouble but you need to take responsibility that every part of the process Cindy Wolf who was one of our speakers who's who's a James Beard honored chef for many many years and she made the point that w when you make a reservation when you show up at the restaurant she owns you from the second you drive up to the second you drive away she needs to make sure that the parking is good every piece of the puzzle needs to be good she can take care of the food in the kitchen, but it's the front of the house that also becomes very critical. So she makes that point very nicely. And B. Mudge, B's watching from Owings Mills, and we had a lot of snow this morning. We hardly ever get snow, but I think it's like the third or fourth time it snowed in the last two weeks. And this was like some big heavy snow. It was like four or five inches that kind of uh, made a mess this morning. And Lidiana is on the other end of the world where there's no snow in uh, Palo Alto. So Liliana works in San Francisco, but um, like everybody, you know, is working remotely. So she's in Palo Alto, and Liliana does send me pictures, and some of them I post, or some of her music selections we post. But Liliana kind of, um, uh, when she, her pictures are better than ours. I also walk, but I'm walking in circles with the Zinrikes. <laughs> the same streets, the the street, the, the street view does not change. So uh, we are there. So with that, I think. Um, so what, what I recommend you do is. If you look at JAC or if you go to PubMed, which is easy, and you type in my name, Elliot K. Fishman, and JACR, you'll see all of the articles. Now, there's a bunch more articles we wrote that aren't related to the speaker series, but the titles you can see because the first author is always somebody famous. So I'm in the middle there. We have right now Linda Chu or Steve Rowe write the article. Myself edits it, and our speaker edits it. And the speaker is the first author because they're the ones who did all the hard work. So I think it's worthwhile for you to read. I think it's, um, I think Lily probably just posted something about YouTube she posted, okay? But uh, there's a lot of other things you can uh, do. I also want to remind people that this is our first annual, I hope it's not annual, I hope it's a one-time uh, event, our virtual meeting because we've been in Florida for 36 straight years. B has been there for about all those years as well. And John has been there. Unfortunately, we're not going to be there this year, and none of you can be there either. So we're doing a one-day virtual meeting. We have 10 lectures beginning at 8 o'clock. I'll do the introduction. We'll finish by 4.30. Uh, it will be on time. We have a bunch of Q&A sessions. I think it's going to be very exciting. It's not like seeing Mickey Mouse and Darth Vader and Yoda and the boys, but uh, it's as good as it gets in 2021 in the middle of this COVID mess. And COVID, you know, hopefully you're getting vaccinated. Only 10% of the U.S. has been vaccinated, not even 10%. So we need, we have a long way to go. So hopefully um, 
things will pick up. I know Biden's trying to move things along. Uh, companies like Uber and Walgreens, Uber is going to drive you to Walgreens and no charge to get your vaccine. And as B said, I miss Florida. I miss the Cayman Islands. I miss California. I miss Texas. I miss going to Starbucks. I miss going to Panero's. I, I go, um, I go, every, it's very sweet, John, but I, <laughs> I, you know, I think the hardest thing, since we're all very careful, of course, is just not doing things spontaneously. Like, it's not like uh, Panero's is the greatest place in the world to eat, but, uh, you know, you get a tuna salad, you get a cup of coffee, go to the bagel store, go to Goldberg's, get a bagel with, sm with smoked salmon, or get a bagel with whitefish salad. I mean, those are not really big things in life with a cup of coffee and read the newspaper. That's not a big thing in life, but it's amazing how COVID has made that into what you miss. You don't miss the fancy meals or all these fancy things. Yes, you miss them, but it's the little things in life, I think, that are challenging. I mean, you can be, in, you can be with Jay Jamie and Glenn Burney. Maybe that's not as exciting as being in, as B says, being in Florida or Liliana says being in California. But I hope, um, I, I'm, I'm always a very big optimist but uh, I'm also very, very practical. I don't think you're going to see meetings of any nature throughout 2021. I think uh, I, if you ask me, when are we going to be taking off our masks? I really don't know. I think probably if everything goes well, we'll start seeing meetings coming back in 2022. So I think, you know, we still have, I hate to say, I think 2021 for a lot of people, for a lot of things, is still going to be locked down. And you can see I'm trying to get a haircut. Look at that. This is the longest hair I had since I was in college. And that was uh, that was a long time ago. And uh, then I couldn't afford a haircut. Now I can afford it, but I can't get it. The person who cuts my hair for 30 years was nice enough to do it outside a couple times because she's afraid of getting sick. And um, But it was warm weather. If they don't cut your hair, she won't cut your hair when it's snowing. <laughs> so anyway... So with that, I thank everybody for their attention. I hope everyone's having a great, great day, a great week. Uh, we'll see you on Saturday. If I don't speak to you before, have a great Valentine's Day. Have a great Lincoln's birthday. Lincoln was born fe uh, February 12th, right? Uh, Lincoln, I don't know. He, he didn't rate like Washington, so he did not get a holiday. Though they took away, for a lot of people, they took away Washington's birthday. But... I think it's still, uh, my grandchildren I know are off from school because Washington uh, birthday is a big time holiday in New York. Anyway, so with that, I'll, uh, I'll thank everybody and um, hope, to, hope, um, hope to see you on Saturday. Have a great day.